I'm going to start with an apology. Um, as you just heard, Nick's not able to be here, so bad luck, you've got me. So we'll just run on with this from that. So I'm fair, some of the questions and some of the farm could be interesting. The farm is obviously in Wiltshire's in Nather Valley near Salisbury. It's been farmed for the family for some 70 years. And they not only farm their own farm, but they actually farm contracted farms around the area. It's a mixed unit of about 490 hectares with an outdoor pig unit rotating on a biennial basis in terms of um, moving the, through the fields. And it has sheep on the bottom meadowland down by the river, uh, but it's predominantly arable. The soil types vary from uh, clay to green sand, um, right through the valley bottoms, right into chalk to a clay cap on the very top of the hills. The crop rotation is mainly a three-year cycle of barley, oil seed rape, with peas and wheat, and obviously the rest is permanent grass for the sheep. Challenges of the farming on chalkland and the river valley are very testing. The climate is changing, and they've been keeping weather patterns since 1960. And obviously, surprise, surprise, um, the weather's becoming especially wet in the last 10 years, and especially this last year. This produces um, a lot of particular challenges, including access to the land, contraction of time available to work, and different machinery to overcome and reduce the effect of compaction. These are the basic indices running through, and I think Henry will recognize some of these. Um, the potash ones, you can see they don't suffer like I do in Wales. The pH levels, they don't suffer like I do in Wales. Phosphate, and then magnesium. Over the years, uh, the mechanization has increased to the point where we're in limited uh, seasonal labor, so it's all done in-house mainly. They have a large investment in high-end agricultural machinery, moving a lot to tracks away from wheels. The embracing of technology over the years has seen a huge benefit in cost reduction and yield increase and hopefully margin increase. Tend to keep the technology advances and change the tractors on a regular basis. Five years ago, the arable unit was contracting has increased to 3,000 hectares. That's allowed Nick to utilize his time and to make sure he uses it properly. The size of the farm and the contracted area started to justify GPS technology and an introduction to precision farming. And Nick decided to take the John Deere Starfire route. His cultivation and drilling are now far more accurate and repeatable because the RTK link this type of drilling is leading also to savings in sprays and fertilizer through reduction in overlaps, machinery wear, and more accurate application sites, site specifically applied. Uh, it's been much more cost effective and again, hopefully leading to enhanced returns. At harvesting, the guidance of the combines has approved efficiency in work rate and throughput, as we heard earlier. Yield mapping the combine has produced and provided a second approach to precision farming, enabling Nick to understand the interfield variation and therefore the impact of varying soil types, also allowing for the offtake applications of nutrient sites, site specifically applied. We have uh, Nick has uh, soil zoned the whole farm, which has improved his understanding of the potential for improving the overall yield and is enabling much more target application of the nutrients. By targeting the soil zones, Nick started to develop fire or notice fine variations in the application of his nutrients with commensurate savings and efficiencies. All the straw is removed and sold. The targeted zoned areas have been hit with manure, and this is showing a direct benefit by ensuring the maximum potential of each particular soil type is achieved, and, and that application and over application is avoided, hence the thing of spring barley. These are obviously some soil zones lying over two fields, showing basically shallow over uh, chalk and limestone and deep calcareous clear soils. That is uh, a, thing, a picture taken from a UAV, which is showing you can see the contours of the ground overlying that soil zone. The Ursula UAS was used, and you can see it flying there. You saw it this morning sitting on its perch. 
The manure was tested for its nutrient value from the contracted pig unit. And for the following crop, the spring barley, the amount of N was varied over each zone to allow for and compensate for the prior application of manure, leading to further savings in input costs and, with the, and using the use of the Azarian nitrogen sensor. Digital surface models can aid in the refinement of this approach, as was mentioned in an earlier talk. And that, you can see, is all the difference you're getting off 3D modeling. You're getting a soil zone overlay on a basic 3D model. A 3D model showing slope, uh, showing slope steepness, and a 3D model showing relative height. Each view of simple aerial imagery has already allowed him to modify his early nitrogen application in his winter wheat. And as there was no available satellite imagery due to early season cloud cover, it gave him an opportunity to get on at the right growth stage. The US can fly below cloud at the required stage. And the US imagery is far higher resolution, 8 to 15 centimeters, uh, than commonly used satellite imagery, uh, roughly around the 22 meter. The containment of black grass is starting to become a real issue on the farm. And it's been creeping, creeping in from stewardship boundaries. And he's particularly keen to ensure we target that threat and to avoid the longer term problem of increased resistance to the available herbicides. The ERSA solution has identified the black grass in the crop and will provide benefits in this year through immediate targeted intervention and in future control. For the following year, he can start with a robust black grass herbicide map of the known black grass areas. And this, combined with the cultivation policy, will encourage early growth of black grass, allowing him to hit it with glyphosate to create a stale seabed. And post harvest, he will likely cultivate a rake and roll to get the black grass to chit and hit it hard again prior to drilling. You saw, I don't know if you saw these maps earlier, but this is taken from the UAV, which is showing the variation of the black grass, which wouldn't be identical. And that's showing in the dark green a 50% uh, density within a one meter grid, or 50% of that is covered in black grass. And the density then is dropping away to zero. His plans for 2013 is an intensive flying program using the UAV, capturing data at various growth stages of the growing cycle of the winter wheat and oilseed rape. And captured imagery is started in January of this year to establish a scientific baseline and ground truthing. He's identifying additional uses for the data directly related to these trials. For the imagery and the nitrogen, the Azarian nitrogen sensor, he'll be making variable rate nitrogen applications decisions to try and correct the patchy establishment and to maximize the yield across the field. This season has been particularly difficult to say the least. And the wet autumn and the winter has allowed slugs to take hold. And he's looking to make the most of that patchy establishment of the R seed rape. And one field was so bad, he's had to replace it with fodder peas. The gray, green area index for all seed rape and winter wheat from US flights is the information gathering. Early season biomass productivity assessment, green head nitrogen assessment trials, combining soil zoning information with UAS to create an integrated picture, destructive sampling of the all seed rape and the winter wheat for both ground and air based GI assessment, combine yield maps for yield variation and offtake. Installation of a way bridge to, to ensure the accurate yield data can be verified against both prediction and the combine recorded data. And looking at the trend information of data gathered over a period of years, which he has never been used to being able to do before. Introducing catch crops, and this is with nitrogen fixes, been using radishes and mustard and some of the ground, and then plowing it out. Looking at any ways in which he can improve yields and control input costs. The cost of establishment, of course, is everything. Wild oats, the site-specific mapping of these, and the management of the aid the US in a similar vein to the black grass, and continued reduction in compaction to increase yield and protect the soil are vital resource. A bit of a gallop, but that's it. <laughs>